So what's the question asking? It's, um, it's asking where does a spot of light hit the bottom of the pool? Okay. And where he's shining. So here's kind of a person. <laughs> And the person has a flashlight, and they're shining this beam of light over here. And this here is the water. Um, and here's the wall. One thing that's tricky on these problems is that you end up with a lot of lines, and it's easy to forget what the lines stand for. So it's very important to label all of the lines. This line <coughs> is the water. This line is the wall. This line I might even label, I think it's pretty clear, this is the incoming light. It's important yes. to label every single line. OK. Uh, and then the question is asking us for what spot, and then this line is the bottom of the pool. So here's the line for the bottom of the pool, because the question was asking us about that. All right. And then the question is asking us for this spot. They want to know what spot on the bottom of the pool is getting hit. Let's actually put in a question mark. Exactly what distance are they asking us for here? It's always good to build a question mark into your picture. I think they're asking us for this. I think they're asking us for how far is the spot of light on the bottom of the pool going to be from the wall. Mm -hmm. OK. All right. Now, how should we know that this is a Snell's law problem and refraction? Well, clearly, we're not interested in the light that's reflecting over here. That's not going to get to the spot down here. So we need the transmitted light. <clears throat> um, so I know one thing I should do is draw a normal. They didn't draw a normal in the picture, but we need a normal to use Snell's law. So we always have to go ahead and put in that normal. And I'll label that too, so I don't forget what that is. Okay. So medium one would be up here in the air, and medium two is down here in the water. So what should N1 be? And what should N2 be? N1 should be approximately one. Yeah, we know that the air has always approximately an N of one, because it hardly slows the light down. And then we have to find water. Yeah, we could look that up in the table, but maybe we're already starting to memorize that because we've seen a couple of examples. Okay, uh, and now we're ready to start using uh, Snell's Law. Well, the first thing we can say here is, as we move into the second medium, is N getting bigger or smaller? Uh, it's getting larger. Because 1.33 is bigger. Correct. So what's going to happen to the angle in the second medium, bigger or smaller? It's going to be smaller. We've seen there's an inverse relationship between N and theta. <laughs> Does that mean that in the water we're going to be bending towards the normal or bending away from the normal? Towards the normal. Because that's a smaller angle, so I could draw that like this. Maybe I'll exaggerate that here. Let's say this is the spot. So I've tried to draw this is a smaller angle than the incoming angle. I could have exaggerated that even more. All right. Now we have a big problem. Uh, the problem is, they didn't give us any angles. Mm -hmm. We can't use Snell's law unless we at least know one of the angles. We've got n1 sine theta 1 equals n2 sine theta 2. Uh, what can I plug in for n1? Uh, you can plug in 1. Because that was the original medium of the air. And what can we plug in for n2? That was our immediate our index for the water here. But we can't get any traction until we know one more angle. How can we figure out another angle here? Well, the key thing to notice is that this is really a geometry problem. We know that this side of the triangle is 1.3, and we know that this side of the triangle is 2.7. We're supposed to be able to use geometry then to find, say, this angle. Let's call this angle alpha. We could, let's see. Now, Pythagorean theorem would be good to find the side. Hypotenuse equals a squared plus b squared. But for an angle, we need the trig functions. Uh, so what trig functions uh, would we use here? Well, this is our hypotenuse. Uh, how would we label these sides? Is this adjacent or opposite? Remember, we're going to try to figure out this angle here. And how about this side? Opposite. All right, so anybody who thought that their days of trigonometry were behind them in their physics course would be mistaken. Uh, we have a lot more new trigonometry here in this optics section. So we have to decide which trig function to use from Sokotoa. 
sine, cosine, or tangent based on the fact that these are the two numbers that we know. If those are the two numbers we know, tangent, tangent yeah. TOA, opposite over adjacent. So let's see if we can write down the right equation for that. <coughs> What does TOA stand for? Well, opposite, oh, it's, uh, the tan, it's uh, tangent, tangent equals opposite equals over adjacent. Over adjacent One thing I noticed a lot of people make a mistake of is they forget they have to take the tangent of an angle. So they, we, here this should be the tangent of alpha, since this is the angle that we've decided to focus on here, this angle alpha. And that should be opposite over adjacent. So this is a step that if you're getting confused about trade, you don't want to skip. You should actually write down tangent equals opposite over adjacent. Here, that's the tang tangent of alpha. Well, is there anything that we know that we can plug in here? We know the two sides. Yeah. Okay. How are you going to find alpha then? Inverse tangent. Yeah, now we take the arc tangent. That's the opposite of taking the tangent here. Arc tangent or inverse tangent. decided to figure out this angle here was 25.7. Now, here's where a lot of people would blow it, because we can't put this into Snell's Law. Because Snell's Law is supposed to be about the angles with the normal, not the angles with the surface. Um, but it shouldn't be too hard here, so what we need is this angle, the angle with the normal. Uh, well, how can we figure out how big this angle is? You can call that theta 1. Yeah, just a little more uh, geometry. This is all a right angle here. What do we get? 64.3. Yeah, about 64.3. 64.3 degrees. By the way, that's why I called this angle alpha and not theta. We only want to use theta for angles with the normal. We only want to use theta for angles with the normal. That way, we won't accidentally put the wrong angle into Snell's law. So I made up a new symbol here, because this was the angle with the surface. It was helpful, but it was not the angle for Snell's law. OK, well then, what can we plug in for theta 1? Uh, 64.3. Good. OK. Sounds good. Sine of 64.3 divided by 1.33 is about 0.68, and then you have to take the arc sine. You got 42.65 degrees. Right. All right. Uh, good. Or, uh, well, let's just, why don't we call that 43 degrees? All right. All right, where does that go in our picture? Let's put that into our picture in the right place. You already got it. Good. Now what? Uh, it's hard, I'm exaggerating things so much, it's hard to even draw this here now, but this is our 
forty three degree